Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with a half fabric unboxing because only one box arrived. I did reach out to my supplier and say, you did send two, right? Because his email said two. And I can tell by this box that that's not 187 yards. So this is going to be a fairly quick video because I ordered two and a half yards now of each print, so that's less prints to show you. They're novelty prints. He sent me pictures. I loved the pictures that I saw, but that doesn't mean I'll get any of those. So I just don't know, other than what I held up in the thumbnail, and I liked those very much. So let me just situate myself here. I gotta clean off my table and we'll get started. We will start with what was at the top of the box, which is what I used for the thumbnail. Really loved this one. And I might have had this before, maybe in a different color scheme. I don't know. But I love stuff like this so much. So much. And this I've not had, and I think that's super cute. The only thing is I won't be able to start, like, putting things together, like different... Um, prints for fat quarters or whatever because I have to wait till I get the rest. I'd be so sad if it doesn't come. This I'm not really sure. I don't know. Does it give me any kind of a hint? Celebrate is what it's called. Is it supposed to be cakes? Maybe I should show you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know like which way it's supposed to go. It's funky. I like that. I like the colors. Just not sure what it is. This I love. I love the colors. And I love the print. It's weird. It's forks and spoons. I used to have a print of silverware. Laura Lee, is that how it's pronounced? I love those fabrics. They're all really funky. And uh, I don't know. There's just something about silverware that I like and I just you know really love the colors of this I really really do that would make a cool um, cool placemats picnic blanket whatever okay now I have to dig through the box the pictures that he sent me there was some with owls I loved those and I did mention love the owls and that's uh, a big hint that I'd like those. <laughs> and I also liked butterflies. This is like maybe dragonflies and butterflies. This is cool. So excited. You know, I didn't used to be into the novelties, but now I really like them. Oh, you know, and these kind of things, and then a little owl right there, uh, can always be cut out. Fussy cut for little motifs and all that stuff. Uh, we have some owls and toucan. Isn't that the kind of bird that is? Bright colors. So cool. He also said he was going to be getting some brights and he'd send me pictures. I don't even really know what a bright is. Um, but that's probably part of this because it was in one email. I'll be getting novelties and brights. So maybe this is considered a bright. I don't know. Is my heater making too much noise? Do you like this close-up? <laughs> I like Alphabet. This I've had, and it's just an odd print, but I like it because I love the color. And I just think stuff like this, it's unusual, it's so cool in a scrappy quilt. I just love it. Okay, like this very much. Ladybugs, butterflies. It's going to be fun. I just wish I had it all. But we'll get two videos out of this one. This is unboxing part one. Butterflies. Changed my settings. I don't know if I have it right. Dream big, little one. And it's clouds. I didn't love that. Could you tell? I didn't like say anything. <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh, I like it. It's like somebody shredded a newspaper and then just put all the the pieces and then some pink in there for the hell of it. I like that. It's like a, a strip set already created for you. 
See, we could cut that and just add that. I might have to do a tutorial on that. Ooh. Ooh, pleasantly surprised. Look at the colors. And there's birds and birdhouses. God, I wish I would have had five yards of this shit. Polka dots with uh, some acorns thrown in. Can you see the little acorns? See, see, there's some acorns in there. I'm assuming that's what that is. Okay, I've had this owl print. I saw it. I'm glad to have it again. This doesn't feel like two and a half yards. I don't know. Isn't that just so beautiful? Oh, I love it. Well, this is different. Well, I would have preferred that maybe they were balloons, but I think they're pink tennis balls. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like a tennis ball to me. Got to get more. And I am going to chat with you. Oh, almost dropped stuff uh, for a little bit at the end. So stick around. All right, cool for kids. Um, like castle stuff. Like that. Oh, very cool butterflies. Oh, with gold accents. It's like glittery, but it's not glittery that comes off. It's not glitter that comes off. It's part of the print. More butterflies. That is so colorful, don't you think? I think. Oh, I love this. You know, I'm all into the, you know, flower power kind of stuff. I love black backgrounds. I would like brown backgrounds, too. I really love brown. That would be so cool. Dark brown backgrounds with stuff like that on it. But I'll take the black. Dragonflies. Also with some little bit of a glittery. Very cool colors. Very cool. We got some little frogs. I believe they're princesses. Isn't the frog the prince? And the princess kisses the frog? But those are princesses because they got even got princess lips. I'm glad I got it in green too. This. Because it allows me to uh, have a mate to go with this. And the colors, this green, I've got to dig it out. Oh. See, I just like that green and that blue together. Shut up. Okay, this is cute. Little flowers and a rake and a shovel. What the heck is this? Are they controllers? See, I don't play games. Game on, so they must be controllers. Well, that's kind of cool. The colors are fantastic. Okay, got to get more. There's only like one little batch left. I love this print. Look at that. So cute. Super cool. Gives me doodling ideas. Look, look at that. The fall leaves and look how cool they are. Okay, this I've had. Bells. Oh, oh. <laughs> old-fashioned phones even phones I grew up with the colors look at that God, I love it. okay okay this is a little weird I mean what is it naked guy in the car <laughs> yeah it's a little just odd but hey I'll sell it. Mmm, paint. Paint pots. Skylar is currently back into painting. She still does the slime. Um, the perler beads, she hasn't done that on her own, but she knows we'll do it next time I go, whenever that's going to be. But she's back into painting. Oh, shit, I gotta check my sale. Hang on, because I'm doing a flash sale right now, and I just want to make sure no new orders came in because I have to uh, make sure everything goes smoothly. If so did I show this to you yet? I don't even remember now. Butterflies, little tiny butterflies. And uh, are these onion rings? They sure do look like it. Oh, I remember him saying that 
he um he got some food fabrics. It's like I need to see that before. I don't know. But he tossed that in. He knows I like all over prints, so that's like really good. And this tiny little tone on tone print. More butterflies. And some flowers. And then this is cool. My kind of stuff. Oh, game on. It looks like a money game. I like money. I love the colors once again. Looks like there's math involved. Love math. All right, you guys. Um. Obviously, there's a virus going on around here, around everywhere, and I know that that has, like, completely rocked people's worlds. Uh, not only for those who are sick, or for those who had family members who have already died, but just those who are out of work, and just unsure, scared. I can't believe how many people in this country, as I'm trying to fix this, um live paycheck to paycheck and I think that is the saddest thing and I'm glad there's some awareness of that now because you know I hear it all the time and I'm like who 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 would live like that I think that there are so many people who could I don't know live a different kind of life where they don't have to suffer and worry about living paycheck to paycheck you don't have to be brilliant to create something more secure for yourself and nothing is secure you can have all kinds of savings or whatever stuff can happen you can get ill and have to go through all your savings or whatever but it just makes me so sad that there are so many people who can't get through something like this without having it you know destroy what they have and to be so incredibly worried and that's the part it's not fun to worry about money and things like that and then there's you know all the kids that are now home and so even someone who hasn't lost their job might end up not being able to go to their job because they have children to watch now children who may not have any other option but just to stay home not have anybody who is willing to watch them for you or maybe you don't want to have somebody else, you know. It's just all of that. I can't imagine going through all of that and what all the people are going through, a lot of people. And then all the businesses. I mean, I don't know how. I know everything will be good again. Everyone's going to recover from this. I just don't know how. I didn't know it was possible that anything like this could happen, that so many things could shut down. And it's just very i don't know it's mind blowing to me i thought it was odd uh, i mean understandably it needed to be done but on 911 when there were no more planes in the sky i was like how how can they do that where are all the people the airports must be filled i mean it was just like you know we had just gone back to a different century you know and there was no planes in the sky at least across the united states and I just thought, how can that happen? I didn't know that could happen. And then I was like, well, it's good to know this can happen. You know, if we need to have it happen again, we know that planes can land and there's room for everyone. Um, and it's kind of how I feel now, even though I wish none of this was going on. It kind of makes me feel good in a way, you know, to know that the United States can completely just about shut down and it's not going to be the end of the world it's going to suck for many I hate that I hate that part but it's uh, you know I, I don't know I find some comfort in knowing that the world can shut down and there aren't like you know asshole people out there starting riots or just you know trying to be horrible there are some on Facebook that I wish would just be quiet about it because they spread so much information that's not true and all that stuff so you know I'm not saying there's anything good in this like this is good to the point where it was worth this happening just so we can learn these things no not at all I'm just saying that I am surprised at how this is going, even though people 
Uh, you know, some just think it's just awful that everything is shut down. And, you know, I, I don't go there with an opinion as to what's awful or not. I look at it as this is what has happened. And I just think that it's incredible that people can get by. And I think it will all end up being okay. Except I do worry about the people who can't afford to survive something like this. Like, what if it lasts a very long time? And for people paycheck to paycheck, one week is too long to go without, uh, you know, a paycheck coming in. So that part is very scary. With all that said, I have created a life for myself that is absolutely not affected by this other than the fact that illness could happen. But I'm not talking about the illness part. I'm talking about the, um, you know, the being, you know, told to stay home and all that. We do have uh, positive people in Maine. I believe 58 today or 56. I don't think we've had any deaths in Maine yet, but I'm not 100% sure. And I do have this on like 24-7. It's on right now. I just don't have the volume up. So, you know, I'm just listening to this stuff and absorbing it. But as for what I do for a living, none of that has stopped for me. I can have fabric sales. I can do YouTube. As a matter of fact, there's more people than ever watching YouTube right now. And as for not going out, I have found such a relief that now I don't have to feel guilty about not going out because you guys know I'm a homebody and I'd rather just stay home and work than do anything else. No doctor appointments. Canceled the dentist. Well, I canceled first and then they canceled me because they're shut down unless there's an emergency. You know, not needing to go to the store every time I feel like I need something. I'm waiting until I'm out of milk and bread and, you know, just going for those things and hurrying back home. And I feel good that I don't have to feel guilty about not going out and doing these things. So this is like a vacation to me, not to make light of what's going on. But I'm just saying uh, it's hard for me to imagine uh, how awful it is. For other people because I feel like everybody in this world must be absolutely content, happy, and secure with their job, with their bank account. But that's not the case. That's not the case for almost everyone, I guess, unless you're a millionaire. I am far from that, but I have done what I needed to do through the years so that this doesn't bother me. I always make sure I have enough that I could live two years in a crisis. Two years! I feel somewhat secure with that. And it's especially helpful for when I want to change careers. It takes time to build up something else. So I always want to have at least a two-year backup plan that I can pay whatever. If I'm in this house, the taxes and all that it costs to run this place. Or I can pay for an apartment or whatever. And my food and my car and, you know, if I have car repairs or dental expenses, whatever. I'm set. I created that for myself because I worry about enough shit in this world. I don't want to be worrying about that. So it's one thing that's completely in my control. I can't control the fact that it could disappear. It always can. Something can happen and just wipe us out. But for the most part, I feel somewhat safe. At least I know I've done my best. And I don't panic when something comes up like this. I don't say, oh my God, you know, where's the next loaf of bread for my mother coming from? It's all good because I have planned in advance for stuff like this. Um, not for this, but you know what I mean. I keep looking at the TV because that's all they're talking about. I'm home. I'm working as normal. I feel completely freed up from any guilt of, you know, not going out. I don't have appointments coming up. I mean, like I said, it is like a vacation for me, a vacation from life. I can just stay in my house and do what I love so much. And I hope there are others in this world who have built something like that. And, you know, I wish there was ways I could help others, but I have a 97-year-old mother. She just turned 97 years old yesterday. I can't risk, like, going out and doing things that, you know, might be helpful 
because I can't take it back to her. As it is, I do go to the store, and as it is, we do have her aid that still comes in, and that was like, what do we do about that? But the thing is, is that I need that help. I really do. Who's texting me? Oh, it's about Skylar's paint shopping yesterday. Let's see what Derek says. I asked, he said they were going to go out and get her some paints, and I was like, put it on my card. <laughs> so I, I have a card, Derek's an authorized user, so that when I want them to have something, I just say, go do that and put it on my card. Was the paint shopping successful? I asked him, and he said, yes, she's painting everything she can get her hands on, LOL. How cute. So that's uh, one thing that I don't like is I don't, you know, have any plans to go see Skylar anytime soon. I have to wait and see if this settles down. But even that, trips are exhausting for me. Exhausting. So I just tell myself it's out of my hands. Absolutely, I would go if this wasn't going on as much as I sometimes dread it and then I want to collapse after. But it's out of my hands, so there's nothing I can do, so the pressure is off. I don't have to plan a trip. I can stay here and work and just, you know, knock on wood that the illness, even if I get it, that I can survive it, and if my mother gets it, that she can survive it. You know, of course I think of things like that. I don't want anybody to be sick. But again, you know, we can't really control that. I'm doing the best I can by you know, not going, what am, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I hardly go out as it is, you know, I'm not, um, I don't even frequent restaurants. I don't even do McDonald's drive through You know, I am doing my accounting for last year because I want to, I have to do my taxes. And I think there's an extension, but I don't care. I still want to get them done. And when I'm done, I'll actually have to tell you guys like how much I spent on, you know, eating out or a take out or whatever it's kind of funny thousands of dollars on fabric and then like I'll have a McDonald's charge of like a dollar four and I know that's just like one thing for my mother I don't even know what you can get for a dollar four or maybe it was a dollar forty I used to be able to get the Sundays for my mother and Skylar for a buck but I think those have gone up anyway it's just kind of funny and I said other people would have that expense column huge you know a lot of people spend a lot of money eating out uh, coffee, stuff like that. I don't do any of that stuff. It's amazing how much money you can save if you don't spend on things like that. So I did want to tell you that everybody here is fine, and, uh, you know, I just hope everybody in your world is fine, too. And if you are going nuts because you have nothing to do, well, there's a lot of things to do. Uh, nobody should be bored, you know, especially with the Internet. So many people are addicted to that. You've got stuff to watch. You've got games to play. Or actually take out a board game and do something like that. If you're struggling financially, I'm going to say something. I think it's going to be okay. Hang in there. I don't, I don't think this country is going to just let everybody fall apart. I really don't. I think there will be a lot of help. It might be hard, you know, until we get to that point. Um, but I do think that good things will come out of this at the end. It will get fixed and we'll be prepared, better prepared for the next thing. And, you know, think about that for yourself, especially if you're young enough and, and you really would like to start something, you can. Look, me, me. I mean, I do have a college degree. I have two college degrees, but I never used them. I was, you know, fairly good in school, but I, you know, I just knew I didn't want to work in the outside world. And so I created jobs for myself. And you know, even as a drunk, I was able to do that. It was so important to me that I could be secure in that way. And you don't have to be a brilliant mastermind. You just have to be reasonable. You have to be willing to start stuff. Anything I start has minimal to no investment. You don't soak money in to a business to make money until you know that that business can actually make money. You know, you start out small and you do it while you're working other jobs. What is it Oprah says? You do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do, something like that. You know, just start something on the side and then start saving. And then when you have enough savings that you can 
stop your full-time job or whatever. You can go on your own and create the life that fits best for you. You know, I know it's not everybody's thing, but I think a lot of people think it's not their thing because they think that they just can't have that. And you can. I'm here to tell you, you can. All right, you guys, that's it. For now, I will be back with part two of this unboxing, assuming the other box arrives. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.